Hello everyone, and welcome to Lori's Live. Lori's Live Broadcasting Live from LA, California. I'm Lori Mestis, and I'm with Mestis Ministries, and I am bringing you a word from God today regarding how we have the opportunity to change our world. Because God has given us authority in the earth, and we need to learn how to take that authority. So today we're going to talk about just the role we play as believers in terms of how to be a part of the change our world needs to have. So our whole week is on change our world. How do we change our world? Well, the bottom line is it's one heart at a time, one heart at a time. That's the answer. <laughs> but there's different things we can do to get us in a position where we can be an aid to see that change take place. Because we personally can't change a person's heart, but God can. So we can be his instruments in that change. And that's an exciting consideration when you realize that you're here to be an instrument for God, that you're here to make a tremendous difference for God. So I just want to say that um, today we're going to get into that a little bit and we're going to continue on where we left off yesterday in one of the components that God's asked us to participate in to see this change come to pass. So before we begin, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you, Father, that you are the only one that can change our lives, God, that we need to give you permission, Lord. We know that, but when we do, Lord, I thank you that you do that change on the inside of us, God, that you do that surgery, surgery and that surgical procedure that needs to happen in our hearts, Lord. And, and um, I thank you that we adopt and that we choose to have your heart, God, so we would know how to walk out our lives to honor you and then that heart so we can bring your love and your life to others, too. And we pray all that in the precious name of Jesus. And they all said, amen. All right, guys, I'm checking out. I don't know what it looks like on your end. <laughs> but here I am with, okay, let's see. <laughs> I got this piece of hair. Fixing it here. <laughs> anyway. Okay, hi. So this is Lori's Live, and if you're new to Lori's Live, basically I come on and I share different things that God has put in my heart to share with you guys to help us become all God's called us to be and do what God has called us to do while we were here on this earth. I mean, the one thing that I know from the Lord is that we need to understand that we are, though we live here, we're not from here. Hmm. And when you think about that, it's like, it may, for me, it makes me realize, oh, wow, I'm not from here. I, I live here. I'm not from here. Basically, what that means is that God has brought me here for a purpose, to do a work for him. We're ambassadors for Christ. And there's a scripture in Philippians 3.20. It says, our citizenship is in heaven. Wow, our citizenship is in heaven. That's really something to think about. So though we abide here, we are not from here. Though we are, we are in the world, we are not of the world. You know, that's another scripture. We're not of this world. And so we have to be very careful that we don't take on the world's point of view about anything, like really anything. <laughs> so that's an interesting way to approach life and to try to live out life from God's perspective. If we realize that we're here on assignment as his ambassadors, then we would not take a worldly point of view about anything. We would have a biblical point of view. We would have God's point of view. And then it makes what we do make more sense. It makes the decisions we make uh, lined up to what God would have us to do in terms of those decisions. So again, let's not be so married to this world in which we live in. Now, I don't mean married as far as that we're doing worldly things all the time. That, that's not what I'm saying. But just even mindsets or getting um, on board with certain things that are going on and jumping on a bandwagon about this or that or the other. Frankly, we can't afford that because we have to realize that we are spirits in a body and we live here inhabiting these bodies 
for God to do a work through these bodies in the spirit that he gave us. Okay, think about that for a minute. <laughs> well, if we're not from here, we're from heaven. He sent us here in these earthly bodies to be his representatives. All right, so how does our world get changed? One heart at a time. How do we play a part? Well, there are several things he gave me to share with you this week, so I'm gonna go over those, and then today we're gonna to get into prayer specifically, okay? And then I just wanna say hello to everybody too. So um, basically what he showed me to share with you this week were three different components that we need to actually walk forth in to make this change in our world. The first is prayer. And today we're going to discuss that more. We discussed a bit of it yesterday, and I'm going to expound on it and add another component to that. And the other thing is share, prayer, share, which we'll get into tomorrow, and then prepare so God can go and repair the hearts of men. So we basically are the... Um, say with the precur precursor, I guess you could say, we are the one that leads the way for that heart change to take place. He uses us to do the bidding he wants us to do in the earth, both prayer, sharing the gospel, and preparing the hearts of those who God wants to repair. All right, so that's the idea for changing our world. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to go into all this. So let me say hi to some people who've come on. Hello, Robert. Good to see you. Trent, wonderful to see you, my friend. Hey, Terrell, good to see you as well. I think Cheryl Lynn, you came on. Hi, Cheryl Lynn. Lovely to see you, my friend. And I know Linda Goodman is there. I think Carmen's on too. Anyway, as you guys come on, just say hello. And as we go, please just put comments in. Say yes, if you like what I'm saying, or if it resonates with you, or say amen, or whatever you want to do. And then um, you can even share it with people now. It's going to be really good today. So I just want to encourage you guys that, um, you know, you're not here uh, by accident today. Okay? And God's going to really minister to you. As he's been ministering to me this morning about this very message. So let's get into it. So yesterday we talked about prayer. And I was really discussing the idea of, let's just call it spiritual warfare prayer. Okay? Um, in, under, in other words... Understanding how to pray effectively for God, when you consider what's going on in our world, the crazy things that are going on in our world, well, yes, we're really seeing that today, but really everything's always going to be pretty crazy in our world because there's evil in our world and you can't get around it because Satan is the God of this world. That's what the Bible says. And when he was kicked out of heaven, God gave him the earth lease. So, you know, when Adam and Eve blew it, sin was here, right? And it wasn't until Jesus came that he paid the price for that sin. However, if we don't receive what he did, that sin still abounds, right? So it's here. Now, how we function in this is the key. And as a believer, when you know your sins have been forgiven, then you can walk in your authority. And that's what Jesus paid the price for you to have as well. Not just to have your sins forgiven and remitted, but to give you his righteousness in exchange so that you can walk fully convinced and assured of who you are, whose you are, and what you're here to do. Well, he's called us all to take our authority. Well, what does this mean, authority? Authority, it's not having authority like against someone else. <laughs> it's against spiritual wickedness in, in the high places, okay? So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says that we are to take our authority and pray against like I said, spiritual wickedness, okay? So he tells us to take authority against those, those spiritual things in the spiritual realm, okay? And Ephesians 6, 13 says that we're to put on God's armor as well so that we can resist the enemy in the time of evil. <laughs> well, we need to be equipped. We need to have our armor on. Interesting. So then it says then after that battle, you will still stand firm. Now, um, we also discussed yesterday the scriptures that talk about um, that, you know, we come against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. So our warfare is not against flesh and blood. And that's what I discussed yesterday. It's not against people. We should never have aught against anyone else. Now, 
in our soul, in our mind, will, and emotions, we could feel ought. We could feel, <laughs> we may not like someone, you know, we may have a problem with someone. We may feel offended, rejected. We may be bitter. We may be angry, whatever. All that stuff's real. But the truth is, is that that is our soul operating, not our spirit. So if we give way to our soul, then we're going to have issues with the flesh. Our warfare is going to seem to be with one another. But God said that warfare is not against each other. It's a spiritual warfare. Principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this world. That's who we're warring against. So the part today we're talking about is prayer. How do we change our world? First thing is prayer. How do we pray? We come against spiritual wickedness. How do we do that? We speak to that. We speak to the spirits of strife. We speak to pride. We speak to evil in all forms. I mean, you know, there's so many things. If you, if you kind of, you know, been around the block a little bit with understanding the spiritual realm and, and the, 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 the devil has demons. Okay, and there's all these spirits that kind of hang around, and if we give them audience or we allow them to, you know, come into our thought life, then we're going to be controlled by them too. But we can't, as believers, afford that. We can't allow that, and not only that, but we have authority over that. So when it comes to just the overall, like, I want to say, like umbrella of the spiritual realm in our world, we can pull down strongholds. That's amazing when you think about it. He gave you authority to pull down strongholds, to pull down those spiritual wickedness in high places, to pull them down. So that's how you pray. We don't pray hoping God's going to do something. Oh God, please do something in our world. I mean, I discussed this yesterday. He already did what he's going to do. He came down already. He paid the price already. Now he's telling you, you take your authority. You put on the armor. You pray against these things. So let's not get, you know, caught up in and moved about by what's going on out and about. Don't get caught up in it. Don't feel like it's, it has control over you. It does not. All right? So that's the first part of prayer. Now, the, the other part of prayer I want to bring up today is praying in the spirit. These are the two component, components of prayer that I believe that God is showing believers, at least he's showing me to share it with you, that, that, that there's two ways to pray right now. You pray, when you pray in English, <laughs> in your native tongue, you are coming against and pulling down strongholds. That's all you got to pray. Just come against that stuff. All that's under our feet anyway, okay? But you have to remind it that it's under our feet. Then praying in the spirit. So let me read a couple of scriptures about that. So Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplications for all the saints. Now, Ephesians 6, 18, praying all the time in the spirit. Well, let me talk to you about that for a minute. Prior to that verse are all the verses I'm putting on the armor. Like I shared before, it's, he said to put on the armor. That's all there. Ephesians 6, 12 through 18 talks about every piece of the armor. And it finishes up by saying, praying at all times in the spirit. So they go together. You have to put on the armor. You go to spiritual war, warfare as you're praying. And you're praying in the spirit in the same way. Because it goes on to say in Romans 8, 26 and 27, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. There you go. Well, I could really be groaning right now, and I have been. I don't know about you guys, but I've been like, wow. I mean, you could almost feel the oppression going on. I do. I'm not sure if you guys do. But you can tell me if you do and type it in. But you can. there's a heaviness, man, and I can feel it. And he's trying to tell us, like, pray in the spirit so that, you know, this stuff can be, like, broken up. Like, breaking up that foul ground idea. Like, break it up. Break that heaviness off of you, off of our land, off of this world by praying in the spirit. And he who searches hearts 
know what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So as we're praying in the spirit, and I'm going to make sure that you all understand this if you're not familiar with that terminology, it means praying in the spirit means praying in tongues. It's heavenly language that God gives you. Now, many of you may be watching and saying, well, of course I know that, but not everybody does. So I just want to make it clear that if you know about that and you do pray in the spirit, I want to say right now is a time to up it, up your time praying in the spirit. Just decide that like you realize that it doesn't matter what you pray right now, specifically about what's going on. Um, it says right here that, that God knows he searches the hearts and he knows the mind of the spirit. And we are one with him. So as we pray in the spirit, it's saying that he's interceding for us. In other words, he's praying along with us. He is uh, crafting what we're praying and enabling that to manifest. Because God's the one that manifests that what we pray, then he goes to work on our behalf. We pray in the spirit and then he's making intercession for us according to his will. Well, his will is peace in our land, right? His will is prosperity in our land, in our lives and in our land. His will is for us to be living free from encumbrances, is to be his ambassadors and be able to go forth boldly, confidently. His will is for us to really possess the land and occupy the land. So as you pray in the spirit, it's like God's just going to do the work. You just need to and trust that time to him as you pray. Pray in the spirit, believe in God, he's doing the work. You pray in the spirit, you speak to the, the heavenly, you know, spiritual hosts that are, you know, of evil, the principalities and rulers of the doctrines of this world, you come against those and you pray in the spirit. Those two things. Now, um, you, you know, you may have other ways you pray and that's cool. Whatever you do, you're going to do. But I'm just telling you, I really feel right now that God wants us to up our game. You know, it's like, how can you go into battle if you're not fully equipped? If you don't have all your armor, if you're not equipped here, like mentally prepared to go into the battle. And it seems to me he wants us to go into battle because why would he tell us to put on armor? Why would he tell us to wield our sword of the word of God if we didn't have to fight? You know, I thought of something today and I really want to share this with you. I thought about how a lot of people say, uh, you know, God's in control, you know, that kind of a thing. Well, you know, I don't know if you've heard that or if even you've said it or maybe you believe that. Well, you know, with the whole COVID-19 and then everything else, well, you know, God's in control. Okay, so... I was thinking about that today and I don't want to get really off track, but I would say this, if, if God was in control, just think about this. Why would millions of unborn babies have been murdered over the years if God was in control of our world? I mean, he is against murder. Thou shall not murder. That's like in his 10 commandments, right? So why would he have let that happen? If he was in control, why would he have let over 6 million Jews die in the Holocaust? I mean, he, they were called his chosen people. Jesus was Jewish. If God was in control, do you think that he would let that happen? No way. <laughs> that is not God. God is merciful. He is loving. He is kind. That doesn't even line up with his character. So we have to like not just go, well, God's in control. It's going to be however it's going to be. No! <laughs> He gave you authority now. He gave me authority. He's saying, we have a part to play now. The enemy is the one that is doing all this stuff. If God was in control, why would beautiful young children die of cancer? It makes no sense, okay? So just don't buy that narrative. At least that I'm, I'm just submitting that to you. I don't buy that narrative. Okay? Praise the Lord. And there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, you know, that the battle is the Lord's. Well, we sing songs about that today. But why would he have us put on armor and tell us to fight the good fight of faith if the battle was his alone? It's not. He's telling you, good soldier, which there's scriptures about that too, to arm yourself and be ready and go in and fight. <laughs> which is why God is raising up an army, which is why he told me to start this Facebook group called Able-Bodied Ministers. 
He wants us to be prepared and ready to go. Go into the battle spiritually in the spiritual realm in prayer. And then we go and share. And we're going to get into that more tomorrow. So I just want to share those couple things with you today. Understanding that prayer is the key way to get it going. The, the key thing that you can do on your own, in your home, wherever you are, just up it. Up your time with God. Up your time praying. Understand that he is counting on you. He is totally counting on us to actually, you know, get serious and get into that place of spiritual battle and spiritual warfare. And praise and worship, by the way, is another great tool, a great weapon to use. So if you need help kind of getting in the groove, put on some praise and worship music <laughs> or just start praising God and thanking him for who he is and get yourself ready to fight that enemy that, by the way, is already defeated. Amen. He's defeated. But you need to make sure that you remind him and remind yourself that he's defeated. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this time today. Thank you, Father God, that you continue to have your way in us, through us, Father God, and you use us mightily. Father, thank you that we understand how to pray effectively. We understand that it's up to us. You've done what you said you're going to do. You came and did it all. Now you said it's our turn. So, Father, I thank you that we are excited for that opportunity, for the position you've given us as believers. And we take it seriously in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you guys real quick. So, uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about share. So, we, today we discussed prayer. It's prayer, share, prepare, and then allow God to repair the hearts of men. And that's how our world changes. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'm going to be on location. I'm not going to tell you where yet, but like literally on location. <laughs> it's a week of change for me too. Let's start changing our own world. Let's do what we need to do in us to make changes so we can change God's world. Amen. Love you guys. Please like, comment, and share. See you soon.